podcast with uh, Joseph Johnson. Um, another quarantine uh, uh, interview again. Uh, and this time I'm joined by one of uh, a friend and author, uh, uh, Robert Hayduk uh, from uh, Germany, specialist in Kachu. Robert, did I pronounce your last name correct? I didn't even ask. I forgot. It's that. pronounced Hayduk, Robert Hayduk. Hayduk. I was close. Yeah, okay. Perfect. I was, I was yeah. a little bit off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but a little, I, I didn't slaughter it. That's what I, um, <laughs> And so we decided to get together and talk about uh, uh, the Katsu book uh, that you wrote, uh, something that uh, was uh, interesting to me. I had heard about it for the first time, maybe um, seven, eight, nine years ago uh, from our, our friend, uh, Hank Kreinhoff. And uh, so I was, I was really excited and delighted uh, when you reached out to me uh, about uh, uh, distributing this book with you uh, throughout the world. So welcome. So thank you for having me on, Joseph. So this idea, Katsu training, is like, uh, it, it, it was unique enough to where I didn't know about it. I've been in the field for 26 uh, years. And I, and at, at year twenty, I don't think I had heard of it yet. So that's it was unique enough for that. That really kind of uh, I would dare say surprised me that I didn't know about it, um, and at the same time fascinated me because uh, you know Hank, uh, uh, one of my other authors, a dear friend, uh, if he uh, um, kind of uh, turns you on to something, it's 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 legitimate. I don't have to. I didn't have to worry about that part. So that part passed muster right away. Uh, then I was really curious as to what it was and how it would work. Uh, when I came home, I looked up online, found that there's a bunch of different definitions, uh, blood flow restriction training, occlusion training, all these different uh, terminologies. So if you would, before, uh, before we get into that, kind of give me your, your, uh, your own background and then how you got uh, um, uh, into Katsu training and, and what that evolution was leading up to you writing the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, my background, um, I, I've studied sports science um, in the age uh, where we uh, got all this uh, good stuff uh, from the East. And um, uh, I was a, a former uh, coach in uh, rowing, in uh, cycling and uh, weightlifting. So I got uh, all this, or both, the, the expertise from the science world and the expert with the practical coaching. And at, at the time, as I studied sports science, all my, uh, all my professors, uh, they had a, also a coaching background in sports. They were former athletes, they were former coaches or coached, and then they got to university. And um, uh, I, I studied in a, in a period of time where uh, we, of course, uh, was, were strongly influenced by the East German uh, 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 science of training and, of course, all the good stuff from the so former Soviet Union. And that was a time where practice and science were worked hand in hand and very close together. So it was a marvelous time and we, we get, uh, uh, as you know, uh, 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 incredible results from uh, the science and the practice. And um, so this, uh, this is my influence. And uh, with the Katsu stuff, I can say, I still bring you guys in the US the good stuff from the East. <laughs> ain't, ain't much appreciated, by the way. Yeah, and uh, I'm appreciated to, uh, to work with you together because, of course, I, I uh, um, did uh, know um, ultimate at these concepts for a very long period of time. I, mean, I appreciate, really appreciate your efforts to bring all those um, East uh, Bloc uh, stars uh, to the uh, U.S. community. Yeah. And uh, so that's my background. And currently um, uh, I'm working also as a coach uh, and uh, I'm uh, helping uh, coaches in other, um, with, uh, in other sports. Currently I'm working, for example, with the bobsleigh team, Bob Team Friedrich, which are the world leaders in the uh, last seven years in bobsleigh sport. But I also work with youth athletes in rowing 
and uh, I, uh, I um, do uh, also um, give uh, lectures. And uh, so that's my background. I'm, and I'm always, uh, I have the lux uh, luxury to, to switch between uh, 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 having a daily uh, uh, routine and uh, uh, can set my ba uh, me back off and study these things. Because if you want to be an early, an early adopter, you have to give, uh, have an overview and uh, have a calm hand and calm background to see what's really important and not. And I think this is the biggest challenge in our time because we live in a times where we have too much information and the, the challenge is to, uh, to, uh, to assess what's important and what's not. Uh, boy, that's really a tough one. I mean, you know, there's the, the there's a floodgate now of information, but uh, the problem is is that the, the with as the volume has gone up, the quality has decreased um, in that regard. So it's very hard for, especially for the lay person, but even the coach, to understand what's legitimate, what's not, what's valuable to keep and use, and what should be disregarded. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, because as you as you alluded to, I mean, the information amount is astronomical now, like uh, before, you know, in the let's say like in the 80s, maybe the 90s, too, uh, you would wait for one journal to come <laughs> and there right. were you know, five, six articles and that was it. And but you, there was a lot of really good information. Now, articles get written constantly. Uh, right. But the value thereof is not you know, individual value is not as high, obviously. How did you, how did you get this exposure to Kachi? Because this didn't originate in the Soviet Union and it didn't originate in Germany. Uh, I think it was Japan. Yes. Uh, how did, how, so how do you get it? How do you get, uh, you know, hooked up with that, especially being in Germany? And that was a whole different approach. How did yeah. that come about for you? Uh, because uh, as a sports scientist and a coach, you have to stay up to date and you have to, um, seek out uh, in the journals uh, what's uh, what's written there, and that was a time where I uh, read um, much of the research journals. Journals now I do very uh, I read very rarely uh, journals because they inf they have become also so, so inflational that they have don't uh, no value anymore for me. But at that time. Um, I discovered that um, from time to time, always they mentioned those uh, katsu training and um, the, their decision was, or their conclusion is that it worked tremendously for, for muscle strength and hypertrophy uh, in a, at a totally different approach. And then I researched, um, hey, uh, uh, I have to, to, to get those machines or First, I tried it like everyone with all kinds of bands and uh, so on. And I tried it really, really seriously because I replaced it uh, 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 every other training. And I, I, I took my, my, my own body as a, as a guinea pig, of course, because I want uh, to, to learn something. But uh, very quickly, I realized that this approach will never work. And um, it was uh, a really uh, a threat to my health. And I realized because I, I was really sick uh, by using it uh, the, uh, with, with the wrong equipment and I had no idea about how to set up the intensity and so on. I realized that this will never work uh, in the way I tried it. So I realized I had to get those equipment and those machines and at that time, it was uh, unfortunately only uh, available in Japan, and you had to 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 uh, complete a certification, an instructor certification, and of course this was impossible for me or unreachable at that time. Um, but um, I always, uh, every year, I, I followed this, and uh, in the at the end of two thousand and fourteen. Um, uh, uh, an international company was founded in Huntington Beach, California, Katsu Global. And from that time, it was available, uh, the first time it was available to buy new Katsu machines uh, for dollars. So it was great for me. And I wrote them an email. But unfortunately, I got no reply. 
Um, so it was uh, it was a pity for me, uh, but uh, only uh, half a year later, uh, the company um, um, uh, was in uh, at FIBO Cologne, the fitness exhibition, and that was this was what a what a what a destiny, what a luck, and of course I knew um, of co the the potential of it, and they had a very small booth down there of those uh, cheap Chinese uh, 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 barbell manufacturers uh, where no one uh, got, uh, got there. And uh, I, I visited them and I, I think uh, I, I talked to them. It was Steven Munatonis, one of the founders of Akatsu Global. And uh, it, I think it was a little uh, destiny because um, I, I said to them, uh, I followed Katsu for years, and now I would like to join the team and help to make Katsu more um, known in the world. So once you got kind of moving with that, and um, I guess kind of, I don't know if you were learning more right then, but did you find that there were things that you didn't know about it or did you have a clear understanding of what it was, but just not the access to the, the equipment? Uh, beside the access to the uh, equipment, um, it is more uh, a way, um, okay, um, that the, uh, how to apply the correct pressure. That is what is, is was, and for, for many people is today still a, uh, 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 a secret, I would uh, I would say, but I learned a lot about the correct pressure and sometimes how to explain katsu and 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 uh, the, all the field of application because uh, in the research field katsu or blood flow restriction is most commonly known with the benefits in hypertrophy, but I learned that um, the sport specific uh, application uh, have uh, much more benefits to offer then simply uh, uh, hypertrophy training. So I learned how to, um, how to increase fatigue and with the metabolic effects of fatigue, there, there are many, many uh, beneficial effects for many uh, different sports, sports specifically. So for those who don't know, and there's a lot probably that don't, can you def uh, talk about just how, how Katsu was developed with the developer and give us kind of like a working definition of what Katsu actually is. Yes. Um, Katsu is not a methodology which was uh, developed in a laboratory like many people might think. Like nearly every other methodology or training methodology on the training, uh, um, the Katsu methodology was developed by a practitioner and uh, doing uh, very uh, much mistakes over uh, a long period of time. And so the Katsu methodology developed by uh, Yoshiaki Sato from Tokyo, Japan, is a methodology which is based on empirical data. So uh, Dr. Uh, Sato uh, discovered this me methodology by ac accidentally in 1966. And in the further uh, decades, um, he developed uh, uh, the, the methodology further. And in the 1980s, 80s, um, he, uh, he was uh, at a level that he could apply this methodology to others. And a decade further, in the 90s, he set up his first patents. And uh, nearly 20 or nearly 30 years later, in 2015, we, we were able to, to uh, to internationalize this methodology. So you see, it's a, it's a methodology with, with the decades of background and the, with a very slow development because it's not the product of a fancy startup from the Silicon Valley with millions of, of uh, uh, marketing budget. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's the result of, a, of a single practitioners and I really appreciate his uh, hard work and, uh, uh, and his decade long hard work. Huh? And what katsu, katsu actually mean, it's, a, it's the Japanese word for additional pressure. And I, uh, this, this was, uh, I was taught this, uh, this means additional pre pressure, maybe a different way to explain it, it means compression. Compression and katsu training 
actually would mean compression training or, or movement under compression. And the whole secret. What separates an elite world-class athlete from everyone else? Their genes make them quicker, react faster, and more explosive. What if there was a way to, in a sense, turn on those elite athlete genes in the average person? Recent advances in genomic research and sports nutrition have proven this is now possible. Introducing Myosync by Nootromic Sport Nutrition. Multiple studies show it increases quickness, explosiveness, and strength. In most cases, your vertical increases by at least one inch an hour after it's taken. Through a proprietary blend of ingredients, Myosync in effect flips the switch on those genes that make you jump higher, run faster, and lift heavier weights. Here are several Myosync testimonials. This is Daniel Stokes, he's a sprinter. What was your best time before we started training this season with Myosync? Uh, 21.5. And what's your best time as of today? 20.7. Could you um, explain to us um, what the, uh, the fast twitch muscle supplements done for you, Myosync? It made me more explosive, it helped with my reaction time off the ground, bring my knees up quicker, and I continually progress. This is Matt Tomey, head strength and conditioning coach for football and men's basketball at Michigan Tech. If you haven't tried Nootromic Sport Nutrition's supplement Myosync yet, you're definitely missing out. I've had athletes here um, try the supplement and really enjoy the benefits, uh, including an immediate improvement in vertical jump of about one inch. Myosync really stands out with its ability to improve power output, speed, reaction time, even potentially quick decision making. If you haven't checked out this unique supplement yet, uh, go ahead and pick up a bottle of Myosync and, and give it a shot and just see for yourself. Here is lead formulator Rick Green's brief explanation of Myosync. Myosync evolved out of the neuroproteomic research we conducted starting back in 2005 uh, to uh, nutritionally boost the speed strength traits of well-trained athletes. These speed strength traits could include things like reaction time, starting power, uh, maximal speed, uh, quickness and agility, and also fine motor skills. Double-blind placebo studies, as well as many outcome studies, have been conducted on well-trained athletes from many sports and of many ages. The results of this research have shown a sizable boost in muscle contractions, as well as the synchronization of these muscle contractions during speed strength activities. Um, these these bands you can see it and um, these bands we call it air bands because this is a very uh, thin band and we can fill it with air like I hope you can see it because now I I show you that we can fill these bands with air okay so now no. And with, if they uh, are filled with air, it's uh, like like a like a like a tire from a bike. You see, okay. it's very soft, very yeah. soft. Yeah, and this means it's more like a cushion. Yeah, and this cushion um, with this cushion, it is first um, uh, incapable to do an occlusion. And this is the first wrong terminology because katsu is no occlusion. It's, it's a contraindication. It's impossible to occlude. And if you, if you, I hope you can see it, if you see how, how gentle this air tube is, you can imagine that the mechanical compression is very gentle. So what you need is as little compression as, uh, 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 as little compression as you need to get an effect and not as much compression as you can tolerate. It's subtle. Yeah, absolutely. And the second, um, um, I would say, um, secret is that this technology of the band is able to distribute the pressure around the limb uh, in a very even way. 
So that's the secret of these technology that you get an e very e even distribution. And even when the muscle contracts, we all know if a muscle contracts, then uh, the, the circumference uh, um, is different. If you, have, if you uh, flex your biceps, you have a, a, a different uh, circumference if you, if you extend. And so this technology is able to, to give you this exactly the same distribution uh, in every part of the movement. And this is the, this is the secret, one, or one secret of the bands. And if you see, I prepared another band now. It's filled with air also. And I, if I release the band, now look. Yeah. Then it releases. So th this is one, one thing. And um, the pressure you need is is the the uh, main um it's the main way to um uh, to describe the intensity of the training so it's amount level of pressure and duration of pressure so external load does not play uh, uh, such a great role in katsu training because what we reach in katsu training is at a, at a given um, low external load, mechanical load, we can increase the metabolic load inside the body, like it, you would exercise on a much higher level, but uh, this, this stays on the same mechanical load. And I think this is the, the most distinctive feature of this methodology, that we can increase the met metabolic load on the, on, the, uh, on the human organism while staying uh, with the mechanical load at a very low level. And the benefit for me is, is uh, really clear because what are the main problems in, in high level sports? It is overuse injury. And since uh, in the former East, East uh, German uh, methodology of training, they know since the eighties that uh, the volume of training is not extendable anymore. We have reached in the eighties they, they, will know, they know it's impossible to train more. So we have, they said, we have a problem. We have no answer to the problem. How to increase um, load, uh, but not mechanical load. Right. Which, which is, this is an interesting point. I just wanted to make a side note is that we, because this is important for coaches here in the United States, is that we've already reached the point of the levels of training that the body can sustain and hold up under and more is not better more is going to be worse we have to be smarter with the amount of training that we do to be more effective with a higher efficacy rate and i think this is one of the really great benefits of katsu uh, if i'm correct yes and um uh, think about it um most most people or most coaches think in a very oversimplified way uh, because maybe their their um, uh, foundational background in, in bio biology or training adaptation is not good enough and i will remember as i studied sports science one quote from uh, from uh, tsatsiorsky in his uh, groundbreaking book and he already said a, a, a training methodology can have positive effects no effects or negative effects right. and if you assume the body is, is a machine then everyone thinks more training is better and a training is always good but this is not the case as we know so a methodology can also have negative uh, effects and you have to figure out uh, uh, what are the negative effects and for for whom or when Exactly. I mean, th this is, uh, especially as it deals with the younger athletes, I mean, they're very uh, sensitive to training and it doesn't take a lot of training to force an adaptation. So relying on higher intensity methods, uh, you know, are negative. It's, 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 you know, it's not even uh, neutral. It's a negative because the injury rates, you know, uh, even at the high school level are, are fairly high. And that should not be the case, obviously, yeah. um, it, it, especially, you know, as a, as a younger athlete. So now I think this is the one thing that really is interesting to me is that you can achieve, uh, you know, training that would otherwise, or I'm sorry, result with training that would otherwise 
have to be a little higher and you can do it with something with a lower intensity and still get the same job done. Can you talk about that? Like, how does that, what is going on uh, physiologically with Katsu that allows for that to happen? Okay. Maybe I show it if, if I can put on one band, I close it. And this is already, I have already a, a manual fitting pressure. Yeah. And if I uh, give uh, the additional pressure on my, on my limb, um, it, I hope, I don't know if we can see it, but what this, what, what this band does, um, now um, you have a compression on the, uh, on the uh, blood vessels, but the arterial inflow is um, still there. But what this band does is it impedes very gentle the, the venous outflow. Yeah? So um, there is still an ex exchange, but blood flow is um, slowed down very slightly. And what this, um, uh, uh, what this uh, means is that um, uh, a very light uh, muscle contraction or very light exercise intensity, which you normally could, use, you could sustain for a very long period of time. This I could make for hours without a band, for example. Yeah? Um, in, in a short period of time, it becomes very hard because you create in a metabolic environment in like an anaerobic situation. So especially uh, uh, the buildup of lactate arises. And as we know today, uh, 30 years uh, ago, we, we thought lactate is a an, uh, is an waste product, but now we know that lactate is indeed a very useful um, uh, molecule it is uh, treated like, um, I would say, like an additional fuel for the brain and for the heart. Uh, and today, scientists see lactate as an, uh, as like, like an, it acts like a, more uh, like a hormone because it triggers uh, other metabolic effects or, or hormonal effects. So, and so, you, so you get a really, um, uh, a really hard burning now because, but what I'm doing is, uh, simple muscle, muscle contraction. So you get a, a, an increase in metabolic effects and, at a, and as, a, as a, or a stress, I would say stress, it's communicated to the brain. And as we know, there are some uh, uh, release factors which uh, uh, occur in a stress situation huh? uh, in order to repair possible damages. But if there are no damages, huh? then there is nothing to repair. And this is the, uh, the one explanation why the effects of katsu can uh, happen so much faster than in, for example, in, in a traditional uh, strength training, because there is nothing to re recover, because you do not muscle damage, for example. Huh? And now I feel this tingling, huh? and I, I don't know, you see this, this pooling? Huh? We call it pooling because the outflow is 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 inhibited very slightly, huh? and I get now well, really tired while I'm talking with you. Huh? And so, what we do with katsu is we shift the 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 negative effects towards the positive effects. If you see the if you imagine the the supercompensation curve, um, we today call this negative effect cost of adaptation. And what I try to do as a coach, if I would, would like to uh, get a training effect, I would like to pay the lowest cost of adaptation as possible. And this is, for example, the opposite, uh, like many coaches do, they are willing to pay every cost of adaptation and the re result is uh, a one uh, injury after another, or they cannot peak, or they uh, cannot reach their full potential. And I would like to compare it like, hey, I want to buy an iPhone. Um, and I want to buy it at any costs. So they would try, they would buy an iPhone for $2,000. But in what, what people really do is, hey, I would, uh, I would like uh, I would uh, take the, the lowest price um, uh, possible 
And uh, this is what we try, should try to do as a coach. We should try to get the effects at the lowest um, uh, physiological cost. So, it, you know, and I probably should have asked you this first. Can you mentioned that you know the pressure is so high and it's not occlusion, uh, and, and so terminology here in the United States we hear a lot about blood flow restriction training and occlusion training, and this has been kind of misinterpreted or mixed up with katsu. Could you uh, give the distinction between katsu training and uh, occlusion and blood flow restriction training? Yes. First of all, you mentioned one uh, very important thing. Even researchers, um, do, they, uh, they use simply all the names. So I don't know how to, how to use the right terminology. Then I use simply every terminology. I, use, I throw in a bunch of terminologies. The right will be among them. And um, this, is a, this is a really problem because if you want to be very precise, I already, uh, uh, I already mentioned that katsu is no occlusion training because what does this mean occlusion? Occlusion means there is no blood flow. So the, the, uh, my, my, my lymph would turn white. So there is no blood flow in occlusion because occlusion means physiologically that you cut off blood flow in a given uh, organ or so. So occlusion training for katsu is uh, physiologically uh, wrong. Uh, and um, if you see what we researchers understand uh, under the terminology blood flow restriction, it's all kind of things they're using tourniquets, for example, and all kinds of different equipment. And this means for us, they do not apply the same stimulus on the body because a different, for example, a tourniquet is meant to be to to cut off the blood flow. For example, it's very important in surgical situation where you want don't want to lose blood, and they simply um, abuse uh, such uh, such equipment for doing this uh, training. So there is a, a great variety of of the equipment which leads to totally different uh, uh, stimulus. And the only, um, currently, the only uh, way to apply a, a consistent system, it's these Katsu uh, bands and uh, the, the machines that uh, are, uh, allow you to, um, to, to create an individualized pressure that, may, uh, in, in addition, is uh, for, for every person, of course, different. And which has great variations during the days. So, so I think part of this kind of relates back to the, at least in the United States where more is better, right? And so the, the idea that you know, a lot of people were lifting with really restricted uh, uh, total occlusion uh, in, in, in the muscle and then also using high intensity, uh, higher intensity, training methods as well. And from your point of view and from the, the definition, this is completely wrong uh, and, and possibly dangerous. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. But you, you, you speak about a problem that we have in, uh, that we know for very long periods of time. And uh, this is maybe one of the biggest uh, problems we have in all kinds of other methodologies and I think we should uh, um, spend a little time to talk about this. From my point of view, this more is better phenomenon has nothing to do with uh, a background, uh, uh, having a background in physiology, because we, we all know we have to get to get an optimal um, stimulus to get an optimal result. And less educated persons, uh, they don't know about the physiology. Um, it, and it's more uh, a thing about social acceptance because everyone likes to uh, to uh, uh, show uh, him or herself to hey i'm I, i'm i'm really a hard uh, worker i go a hundred percent and be beyond yeah and this is more as a thing of social acceptance 
imagine if we would train, uh, for example, uh, a high level athlete and we would in social media show always, hey, now we're doing 50 percent and now we're relaxing. Now we're drinking something <laughs> easy. Everything right. easy. You imagine maybe something, the image of, of Usain Bolt, the, right. the, the media say, hey, he's a lazy guy and he should train harder. And yeah. I say, for me as a coach, I am completely focused on results and the results in competition. So I don't care what people say in the training because uh, my measure is always the competition results. And then say, hey, what you say now? First, you know what I mean? Yeah. So most most people um, try. Maybe is a, is a, it's 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 a little bit um, supported by social media, where everyone has to show uh, him or herself every day and um, uh, has to build up an image. And the image of a lazy guy, which which, which is on the beach and relaxing a, mo uh, a lot, is not the image the society wants to see for an Olympic gold medalist. It, 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 this is this is all the thing. It, it, it has become uh, cultural uh, yeah. more than scientific in many ways. And this is, uh, you know, something that I repeat over and over again here uh, in the U.S. with other coaches and uh, on the podcast, too. More is not better. Better is better. We have to the I, the hard work in training is not in the actual training so much. The hard work is in discovering what is the most effective method and tools to use uh, and how they should be work used together. That's what is the hard work is to find out what's the most efficacious methods. Um, and, and some people have a hard time distinguishing between those and athletes do too, athletes and coaches both because the understanding is in order to get a good result, you have to work much harder. And, uh, and, and that's just not always true. Um, uh, in most cases in this in this area, it's not always true a, a large part of the time, I would say. Um, yes. And so yeah. that's what's kind of interesting about this is that it's counterintuitive. It's not only counterintuitive. It is, uh, I would say, uh, um, it seems that many uh, coaches have a problem of uh, self-reflection because the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and again and expect different results. You know this uh, uh, quote. I, I think it comes from Einstein. Uh, yeah, but yeah. this is this is this is the thing. So this is a more a matter of the system a coach uh, applies of finding out what works and what not, and is able to uh, and being able to reflect one's own work. <laughs> right. It's, it's, uh, uh, you know, if you have, if you're convinced that a, a certain, you know, approach is effective, no matter what the result is, I mean, as you said, it's insanity. And, and yet I would say many, many coaches, maybe the majority of coaches fit this definition, uh, because they're not seeing a result or the athlete gets hurt really easily. And they somehow uh, explain it in some other way. And, uh, you know, as if it's the athlete's fault, maybe, or, you know, some other circumstance. When, in fact, uh, you know, it, it's, it's their own pre predisposition or presupposition. And I, I think that the, the key is, is that the, the, for them is that their, uh, their identity in coaching is tied to how hard the work is. Uh, you know, that this is so much harder and this is what makes them a good coach. What makes you a good coach is how smart you are and uh, how you can get the most return on investment. And so it's the smallest amount of work with the highest degree of improvement. That is, that's yeah. the key. It's kind of like financial investing. You want the highest return for your money. Uh, you, you know, invest a little and get a lot back. That's kind of the idea. It's the same thing in coaching. And in the scientific field here is efficacy, not uh, not volumes of work. It's not measured in that. Um, productivity is should be the key metric, right? Productivity for for the method. Um, well, 
Robert, I want to uh, extend this out because this conversation is is fascinating. There's a lot of different areas here to talk about, and I and we would be on here for hours doing that. But I want to do this multiple times uh, now that you've given us kind of an introduction and an idea as to how this this works, uh, at least to begin. And then I'd like to get back together with you again. And, and I want to just kind of mention some of the ideas here uh, that I have in the book. So we have the book available on our store uh, at uaconcepts.com. So I encourage you, if you're curious about it, go over there and check that out. Um, and as we go further, just to kind of give people an idea, once you understand Katsu and you're able to use it uh, properly, um, some of the, the the benefits, I think, are just uh, really amazing. And I want to kind of uh, just go over them real quickly. So they're, it, they're finding great uh, results with hypertrophy, like you, you mentioned, also with strength gains, also in the area of rehabilitation with patients who, you know, can't do much. You can you, you can load them uh, in a way uh, that will allow for a great uh, result benefit wise to get them back on track uh, without the, uh, the high loads. Uh, endurance training, uh, mobility training, enhancing recovery, uh, also motor control and skill training, which is one that's really fascinating to me as well. So there's a bunch of different things um, there. Uh, the benefits are really incredible to me. Uh, especially for the, uh, as it relates to you know the amount of work required to get it done. So if you would, I'd love to have you back uh, several more times, and we can uh, discuss uh, all of these different ideas at each step. Yes, I would really appreciate that. Yeah, thank that, you. That'll be awesome. So thank you so much for your time, and uh, and then we'll be looking forward to to getting back really soon. And we'll we'll kind of do these all back to back, especially while we're in, at least in the U.S. I'm still under quarantine, so we've got we've got the time. We want to get this done. Oh yeah, I I really appreciate and uh, thank you for having me on. Thank you too.